chapter 3 in your Schofield Bible, page 1314, 1314. We'll be reading the first six verses, and we'll read the verses responsibly. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Let's please stand for the reading of this passage of Scripture. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for a wonderful day. Thank you for this day honoring mothers. We're thankful for that host of mothers represented by this group who are now in heaven. We thank you for those who are staying by the stuff as they labor here together with all of the First Baptist Church family. And we thank you for our preacher. We pray that you'd tonight use him in a wonderful way in every life. Thank you for our seniors. How we pray for thy blessing upon each of them. Thank you for this great church. Thank you for your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, I pray you'd help me tonight. I cannot in myself meet the needs of every person here there are thousands of people here tonight and the Holy Spirit will have to take what I say multiply it as you did the loaves and fishes in days gone by and feed the hungry multitudes I want to thank you tonight before I speak for the ladies of our church again the mothers the women of the First Baptist Church Bless me as I speak tonight, and them as they hear, and all of our people, in Jesus' name, amen. I want you to sit up straight and listen very carefully. If I were Satan, I would try to destroy mankind. If I tried to destroy mankind, I would choose the key nation in all the world with which to corrupt the human race. I don't think you realize the influence America has. I don't think you realize the fact that Hollywood has pretty well destroyed this whole world. Our rock music culture has covered the globe. Unless you travel in other countries or know something about it, you have no idea. They have copied our miniskirts. They have copied our women wearing the pants. They have copied our rock music. They have copied our loose morals. They have copied most everything America has because America is the most ended nation on the face of the earth. So if I were the devil, I'd try to choose or find the most influential nation in the world. If I were going to try to destroy the human race and corrupt it to make it like it was in the days before the flood or like it was in Sodom and Gomorrah, I would try to destroy the key nation, most influential nation, and corrupt it. May I tell you for a while how I would try to destroy that nation. First, I would try to find the cleanest and the purest mind in that nation. I would seek to find the one single group of people whose minds were the cleanest 
and minds were the purest, and I would choose woman. I wish you could have known women back yonder 50 years ago in America. I wish you could have known what women were like 60 years ago in this nation. When men wore pants and ladies wore skirts down to cover their knees and lived modest and decent lives, I wish you could have known uh, women back down to years ago. I'm saying I would choose the plainest and the purest mind, and uh, I would choose the mind of a woman. And I would try to destroy the purity of that person or that woman. I would invent a machine that could be brought into every home, a machine that had a little screen about that wide and about that tall. And I would call that machine television. And I would put interesting people on that machine. I would put people and programs on it. I'd put a station called HBO, if I were the devil, on that machine. And I'd put, uh, I'd put soap operas on that machine. Because I'm trying to destroy mankind. And if I corrupt mankind, I've got to corrupt the most important nation, the most influential nation. And if I corrupt the most influential nation, I've got to find the purest and finest mind and corrupt that mind. I would, uh, I would put talk shows on that box. And I would have those talk shows to talk about sex. I would have prostitutes and lesbians and bisexuals. I would make the most intimate sexual words common on that box. And then I would continue my effort to destroy and, and, uh, and uh, the, p- the purest and cleanest mind on the face of the earth. Then I would... Uh, I would also start some magazines for women. I'll tell you where I'd put them. I'd put them at the checkout counter in, in, in supermarkets and drugstores. So that as a woman starts to get checked out at the grocery store, there is all kinds of filth that she can pick up and read. If I were the devil, I'd try to destroy mankind, and I would start by destroying the most influential nation on the face of the earth, and I would start by the most cleanest and the purest mind and I would do my best to destroy the purity and decency of that mind. I'm a little tired of people saying, you can't have pure young ladies anymore. That's a dirty, stinking lie of the devil. The young ladies in this room tonight is clean as pure as they ever were back under years ago. Why? Because there's one little oasis and one little spiritual island in America called First Baptist Church and Hiles Anderson College, Hammond Baptist Schools and City Baptist Schools that still believe a young lady can walk down the aisle pure and virgin and sweet and make her first kiss, the kiss at the altar, after she's pronounced the wife of a fine young man. If I were the devil, I would seek to destroy the human race. I would choose the most influential nation. I would choose the cleanest and purest mind, and then I would also choose the kindest tongue in all of that nation. As I sought to find the kindest tongue, I would, of course, choose the tongue of a woman. And I would do what I could to destroy the kindness of that tongue. I would teach her to curse like men curse. I'd teach her to talk vulgar words like men talk. I would destroy the kindness of that tongue. But that isn't all. I'd invent a machine where she could talk to other people, hold up to her ear, and talk to other people on that machine. And I would see to it that, that uh, she talked about other people on that machine. I'd call it a telephone or a gossip machine, and I would have her call and talk about who got the latest divorce and about the latest scandal and the latest gossip and the latest chit-chat, and I'd have her talk in 15, 20 minutes at a time about these things. Rather than talk about Jesus, I'd have her talk about these things and try to destroy the kindest tongue in the entire world. And by the way, I'd give her enough idle time to where she'd have plenty of time to talk on that machine. I, if I could destroy the kindest tongue in America, and the purest mind in America, I'd be on my way to destroying America, and by destroying America, I could influence the destruction of the entire human race. Then, I would try to find the most feminine creature in the world. Again, I would search and finally choose a woman. I never understood why a woman doesn't want to be feminine. I've never understood why a woman wants to act like a man. I've never understood that. Somebody said, well, this matter of, uh, this matter of uh, homosexuality is, uh, is a different lifestyle. No, it's not. It's dirty sin. 
the third is Sam. And, uh, and Reg, uh, Mr. White of the Green Bay Packers is right when he said it's sin, and the Bible says it's sin. Well, you say it's a natural thing. Some males prefer males, and some females prefer fe females. Go out in a barnyard and see if you can find a rooster chasing another rooster sometime. Find some heifer flirt with some other heifer out in the barnyard somewhere. Now you listen to me and you listen well. Uh, the, the, the gay style is not a gay style. It's a queer style. If I were the devil, I'd do what I could to find the most feminine creature in all the world, and I would choose woman. Now, I'd start off by having her cut her hair like a man. Then I'd have her dress like a man. And then I'd have her run for office. I'd try to put a woman behind the mayor's desk. I'd have a woman run for governor of some state. I'd have, I'd have women pastoring churches and preaching on charismatic television programs. I would have her, uh, I'd have women policemen if I were the devil, and women firemen. I don't care who you are, you can't look feminine in a policeman's outfit, and you can't look feminine in a fireman's outfit. I, I mentioned this in this I was out of town preaching, and uh, somewhere not long ago. And uh, as I said before, when I'm gone, the doors are unlocked so many times, you can walk right in if you want to, she's not scared at all. But when she's gone, I put chairs against the doors, and and uh, they, uh, I heard some noises, and so I called the police. And uh, after a while, the doorbell rang, and I went to the door, and there she stood, a policewoman. I said, forget it. Forget it. Now, now, you listen to me. If I were the devil, I would destroy feminine young ladies. If I were the devil, I'd teach you to curse and smoke and drink and gamble. And by the way, I'd also start a unisex movement. I'd call it the National Organization of Women is what I'd call it. And I'd use the abbreviation, I'd call it the uh, now, if you please. And by the way, if I were the devil, in my effort to make the most feminine person masculine, I would have this uh, woman, I'd have her play men's sports. So she can slide into second base like a man. So she can throw a football like a man. So she can play basketball like a man. They'll make popsicles in hell before we'll have women playing sports in the Howells Anderson College and Hammond Baptist Schools. Some of you visitors are about to have a stroke tonight, but it might be a good idea if you'd have a stroke of femininity again. Some of you ladies are saying, I don't believe this sermon. Yeah, but you're a perfect illustration of it. Oh, by the way, I'd put her on the Supreme Court, too. And I'd have her join the Army and the Navy. And I'd let her get into Citadel and other institutions for young men. Because uh, I would want to destroy the feminine. If I were the devil, I'd want to destroy the human race. I'd start with the most influential country, which is America. And I would find the most pure mind and make it impure. I'd find the most feminine creature and make it masculine. I'd find the most... Uh, the sweetest tongue, and make it a gossip. And then I would search for the most modest creature in, in that country. Again, I would choose a woman. If I were the devil, I'd try to destroy her modesty. I'd put her on a beach in a bathing suit. If I were the devil, and by the way, that's what he's done. If you lay out there in a bathing suit, the devil puts you out there. Well, you say, uh, some of you the females say, well, Brother Hiles, huh, you have an evil mind. No, I have a man's mind. And any man that says he can walk up and down the beach and look at a bunch of bikini-clad females and, think of, and sing Amazing Grace and think about soul winning is a queer. If I were trying to destroy America, I would choose the most modest creature. I'd put her on a beach, on a beach in a bathing suit. I'd, I'd put her in shorts on the streets and in her yard. I'd pour her into a pair of pants that looked like pants were painted on her. I would pull over, pull over her a skin-tight sweater, give her a low-cut blouse, put a long slit so her thigh could show how she walks, and I would destroy the most modest creature in the greatest country in the world. And ladies and gentlemen, our civilization is threatened tonight 
with destruction because America has influenced America and because we've lost the old-fashioned, modest, decent, clean, pure, feminine women in our country.